I made a video a while ago entitled Remove Duplicate Values in Array or something to that effect. And really all it did was print the non-duplicate values. It didn't actually remove anything from the array. Well, the thing is you can't actually remove a value from an array. It has a set size. So some people use an array list to do that, which an array list behind the scenes it keeps making arrays and copying arrays to remove the values. So that doesn't truly remove the value either. Uh, an array list can be slow if you're removing too many duplicate values. So what I'm doing, going to do in this video would be better in some situations, but it's still not the best solution. The best solution would be to write out some kind of program to have a hash table to remove the duplicate values, but that's not something that I'm going to get into in this channel for a very long time if I ever get around to it. So I'm going to write out a couple methods that work together to remo not remove the duplicate values, but they'll create an array of what it would look like if the duplicate values could be removed. So we'll start the main method, public static void main. We'll say, oh, let's see, array eliminate duplicates joey equals new eliminate duplicates. And I already have the code typed out in front of me or written out in front of me. So I'm just going to be copying that. It, this isn't something that I could come up with quick enough to actually recreate and make a video uh, without already having the code written down. So the first thing we'll need is a main method. Uh, something pretty useful would be a print method to know if we removed everything correctly. So we'll say public void print array. And something that we're going to do here is just print the array. So print this. So it doesn't uh, return any value. All it does is print whatever array is sent to it. We'll say for int i equals 0. Well, i is less than the size of the array, so print this dot size. We'll iterate over all that. And we will say to, let's see, we'll have print this. We'll have the first element there, and then we'll put a space. Oh, instead of size, that should be length. Size is used for a array list, and then that would also have parentheses. So we now have a method that will print the array. And now let's Let's create the method to actually send in the array. So we'll say public void send array. Normally most people do all this in the main, what I'm about to do here, but for some reason just have a habit of doing stuff in outside of the main. So my array equals, and then we'll just pick some numbers. Uh, I want to have some duplicates there. We'll have some duplicates where there's a few in a row. We'll have, I'll put another two out here. So we have two numbers in a row here. We have some two spread out and we have three nines in a row. And that should show that this will work with every case if you're doubting that. And then we want to, well, well, we won't send this thing quite yet. We'll start writing the method to actually remove the duplicates. So public int, we want to return a integer array. Remove duplicates. And we will take in for this method an array. We'll say first array. So remove duplicates. And even though this isn't the array that we'll be returning, seeing those red lines down there always bug me, so we'll put 
return first array right there. And in this area is where we'll write out the actual method. So the first thing we need to do is change the first array into an integer array. The problem is, if we use just a regular int array, we something we'll do later on with the null values doesn't quite work out. So we need an actual integer array rather than an int array, which I know sounds like the same thing, but they really are different. So we'll create an integer array. We'll say integer first array. And whenever I was programming this, I didn't see the first time I didn't see that problem prop that the problem was going to crop up. So I'm just calling this first array with two T's. It was just easy for me to go back and change those names, so now I'm doing that here. So that'll be a new integer, and it'll be the same size as the array that we take in. And then we will copy all the numbers from first array, the one that we take in, to the array right here. So for int i equals 0, while i is less than first array dot length, we'll say i plus plus, we'll say, no, oh, that's not what I wanted, uh, we'll say first, first with two t's, array i will be the same thing as first with one t array i. So that just copies all the values. And we can now move on to the next part. Next thing we need to do is create a second array without doubles. So create a second array without doubles. So the thing that's going to happen here is we're going to create a second array, of course, without doubles. But it's not going to be the correct size. The array is going to be too big. It's going to be the same size as for the first array. So uh, we'll also need a counter in here for reasons you'll see in just a moment. So int counter equals zero. And then we need a int, we're going to use an integer array here. So integer, we're calling it second array, equals new integer, and it'll be of the size as the first array first array dot length and our goal here is to go through our first array from now on whenever I say first array it's gonna mean the one with two t's in any value that isn't already in the second array we're gonna read that into the second array so for int i equals 0, well, i is less than first array dot length. We're going to continue on going through that whole array. So we'll say i plus plus and go one more further. At this point, we need another method because, well, we could do it in one method, but we aren't going to. We need a method that we can send in the value from the first array that we want to see, hey, is this in the second array? And we want to send in the second array and say, hey, check if this value is in this array that we're sending in. So we'll say public boolean, because we either want to return a true or false value, and we'll call it contains. It'll take in, in an integer array and it'll take in a variable x. So for int i equals 0, well i is less than array dot length, we will iterate over i. And if at, let's see, I'm going to do, I'm going to split this up a little bit. If array i is not equal null, because most of these will be null values at first. So if it's not a null value, we'll continue on. And if array i 
is equal to x. So if we ever find an, the x value that we sent in inside this array, we are going to return false. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to return true. Because that says, hey, this value is in here. But if we never get to there, we go through this whole thing and never return true, we'll get to then and say false. That the value x was not in this array that was sent in. Okay, back to here. We have 4 into i equals 0. We're iterating over that. So we'll say if it is not true that the second array contains, so contains second array, if it doesn't contain the value that we're sending in, then we are going to take the, we're going to set some value in the second array equal to that value in the first array. So second array i equals first array i. Oh, that should be a capital A and two T's there. Messing up the number of T's will unfortunately create some problems. Actually, in, th in this case it wouldn't create problems. We could have any number of T's in either of these. And we'll also need to iterate the counter. And the reason we're doing the counter is so that we know how big to make this this third array that we're about to make. And that's going to be the final array that we send back. So we'll say make third array of correct size and read in the second array. So a lot of these values in second array may be null values. And we're going to skip over those and only read in the ones that are actually the regular values, actually integers. So we'll say int third array equals new int. And we counted the number of things that were get, the number of actual values in the second array with this counter right here. So that's going to be the size of the third array. And we'll also need a value, j, to tell us where we are inside of our third array. So we're going to fill up the third array from left to right. We're going to start at the zeroth place, then the first place, then the second place, all the way till it's full. And then we'll need a for loop to go over the second array. And it's going to say, a hey, if this value is not null, and if this well, it's just going to say if this value isn't null, then we're going to read it in the next place into, we're going to put it in the next place in our third array. So for int i equals 0, well, i is less than second array dot length. We will continue on through there. So if the second array i is not null, As we said before, we'll put the third array j value. So the next place in the third array, it, the next open place in the third array, is going to be that i value. And we'll also need to iterate j so that we don't put the same thing in twice. Let's see, that should be good to go. And instead of returning first array, we want to return third array. Let's see what we have here. We have almost everything. Oh, back to send array. So we're starting with this array. We'll say starting array. And then we actually want to print that. We'll get rid of that line there and say print array we'll send in my array 
and this should not say line because then that would print everything vertically. We want it going across horizontally. After that, we want to send in my array and remove the duplicates. So my array equals remove duplicates my array. Oh, and by the way, this could have been made more efficient. We could have had fewer arrays going on in here. That's just the first way I thought of doing it. So that's how I followed it easiest, and hopefully you all be able to follow along with what's going on in this method. Anyways, we're removing the duplicates, and then we will print those out. So print array my array. Oh, and we should probably put some labels. So we'll say ending array. And we'll print that. So let's run the program and hopefully this works first time through. Yeah. Let me pause it. There seems to be some type of problem. Okay, it was only paused for a few seconds there. There is a very obvious problem that you can see from this screen. If you want to find it for yourself, pause the video. If not, I'm about to show you. Uh, right here, I never actually went into the send array method. So here we could say joey.sendArray, and from here it should work. Let me try to, ah, now you can see the outputs. So we have the starting array, 2, 5, 5, 7, 2, 43, 635, all that jazz. And actually, let me change this just a little bit. Make that print a little bit neater. Okay, so here we have the starting array which is all this, and then down here, the ending array. This is in the same order as these numbers, except for, like, at the end there's a 2. Well, it didn't have that because there's a 2 at the beginning. So that's how that code works. Hopefully you like it better than the last one that a few of you got onto me for it, and thank you for pointing out that I didn't do that video correctly. If you, any of you see any more problems in any of my videos, Please let me know and I will try to fix it. Thanks for watching.